So you can go ahead and bring us in, man. Um, introduce the pod. You ready? This is episode one. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Hold on, let me stop this and start over. All right, we rolling. Just I fit, I fix it in on um, post. So just kick okay. it out. This is our first episode of our brand new podcast. I'm Shalice. I am Jawaski. You want to go by Jawaski? You want to go by what? Yeah, I'm going to go by what? I am what? Uh, this is the first time doing this, people. So, shit, I'm giving out my government and everything. I was born September <laughs> the 21st. I'm a Virgo with the. Uh, I'm a Virgo. My moon is in the seventh house, and, and Mercury is in retrograde or whatever the fuck that means. It's deteriorating, <laughs> much like my health from all of that, from all of that alcohol. <laughs> no, nah, okay. I know we was giving out our zodiac signs. Yeah, go ahead, go go ahead, get your zodiac because we do that in um. Well, okay, so let me set up, let me set up the show right quick. Okay, so it's me, what? My homegirl, Shalice, we met on Clubhouse. Uh, I was a part of a group, uh, Family Ties, and um, she knew people that were a part of that group, you know, Christians. So, you know, she came in and she felt right at home. That's what we do in Family Ties yeah. on the Clubhouse. We have those conversations, big sense of family, man. And, and it is a community and people do come in. So, you know, this is a mashup between Family Ties and the Clubhouse Cousins, you know what I'm saying? Coming together for the one time, doing some major, yes. you know what I'm saying? Big primetime player shit. Do you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> this is where Clubhouse meets pop the podcast. Exactly. So, um, Shalice, man, introduce yourself to the people, man. Oh, okay, okay. Um. I'm Shalise. I'm from San Diego, California. I'm 5'8". <laughs> Just play it. Um, I'm a Taurus. My birthday is May 1st. I'm about to turn 30 in a couple weeks. Oh, cr- <laughs> I'm very excited about it. Got a nice little weekend plan in LA, you know. Stay tuned on the gram. You can follow me at Shalise underscore with the melanin if you want to watch the 30th birthday. Oh, I'm going down fist. Oh, oh. She gonna do it in the tunnel that Elon Musk built out there in Las Vegas. Watch this <laughs> shit. Oh, them lights, those were for her. Yeah. In the Tesla. Yeah, we about to pull up Tesla. 30 Teslas, man. You silly. Um, but yeah, intro- let me introduce myself. Um, I'm white. Um, I am 35. My age is showing. Uh I went to the optometrist and apparently, uh I can't see shit, y'all. Uh, <laughs> so that part, um, I'm a Virgo, man. And uh, yeah, like, yeah, y'all y'all find out who I am and the wonderful person that stay I am. Stay tuned. Yeah, just stay tuned. Just stay locked and loaded. So, man, let's, uh, you want to go ahead and get into it, man? Let's get into it. Okay, okay, okay. I think so, it's a topic everybody's been waiting for. All right, so... Yeah. Um. What, what What you want to What you want to tackle first? I think we must talk about the tragedy of DMX passing. Yeah, definitely. Um. And, and just before we get into it, man, just a brief moment of silence for him and his life and his career. You know that guy had a lot of trauma. He dealt with things throughout his life, and you know we need to take a moment in in the observation for him and his contribution to hip hop. Uh, and just the culture in general, you know. So R. absolutely, R. yeah. R.I.P. D.M.X. Man, but um, yeah. Let's get into it. Um, you know, kind of seeing his passing in real life for me, it was like it, it brought up it brought up a question, you know, for me. Um, he was a he was a eccentric character to kind of say the least. He was somebody that was. You know, as a as an MC, he had a level of energy that was like unmatched. You know, mm-hmm. so um, as we kind of watch this career progress in real time, you could actually see that he had those underlying underlying demons. You know what I'm saying? That he was fighting, and he was fighting in real time in front of everybody. 
And for me, it, it's kind of like, it, it's like watching a train wreck. You know what I'm saying? And kind of it like watching his life up to this point, to the point where it's like, okay, he's in the hospital and he's unconscious and, you know, they're giving all these different reports about him. It made me look at us as an audience, you know, and that's all encompassing. And it's like, I think everybody watched it happen in real time. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. it was always something was on the news or, you know, getting arrested or he on different TV shows. And it's like, this guy isn't in the best help. And you can see him fighting with this thing. Um, and, and that brought an interesting question, you know, that I asked being a part of the audience to the audience. And that is that like, why, why is trauma? And when I say trauma, I mean like specifically black trauma. Why is that something that's entertaining, you know, to an audience? Mm. Like, why do we look at that and we watch it? Like, why are we watching this shit? Like, you know, we never actually take a step back and be like, this is a real person feelings emotions and it, it's like even when we go through our own shit we always have the we always have that veil of privacy you know what i'm saying it's like mm -hmm. i can be going through some shit but if nobody sees it once i'm on the other side of it i can kind of go out in the world and continue in the world artists don't have that luxury you know they they do have the freedom to say whatever they want however they want they do have the freedom to express themselves like they have the creative license like, I think that's a powerful thing, too. The bad side is that their lives are on display. So the 24-7. Yeah, the good shit and the bad shit is always on display. And so as an audience, I ask that question because, you know, DMX isn't the only artist that experienced that. We've watched other artists. Right. We've watched other artists spiral out of control on live TV. And it's like, as an audience, why are we watching this shit? Like, you know. And so yeah, I and and so that's my question to the audience. And I know you some like I, I would imagine that you saw a lot of the same things that I saw. And like, why, why, why are we looking at this shit? Like, that's the question. I I agree a hundred percent. I think he his whole world crumbled and and right in front of everybody. And we watched it over the years. It was like a roller coaster ride. One minute he was up, next minute he was down. But as long as the records kept coming, you know, he was the one of the hottest rappers out in the 99s and the 2000s. And that was a, a dope error. So everybody was on this wave, but nobody cared that his life was dwindling right in front of us. Yeah. And, and I, I think we lose a lot to that, you know. And like I say, it's not only him. Like, And I, I just had this thought, too, and it was like, I don't even think people realize like Pimp C was like, mm -hmm. like he had issues with like lean. Like when you really look at what that shit does to people, like that's liquid hair run. You know what I'm saying? So it's like niggas have the shakes, they be itching. It's like, man, this shit is crazy as fuck. And you can develop like, you can, you can actually stop breathing from that. It slows your breathing down to the point where yeah. you can actually stop breathing in your sleep, which is what happened to him. It happened to DJ Screw and like these people made songs about this dark, like right like, there in the lyrics. Like yeah, like we don't even fathom how dark this shit is. Like sipping on some scissor, like nigga, this shit will kill you. And it's like, like this ain't a, like this ain't no alcohol or you know, no nigga, this is something different. Like this is a fucking drug that people were like drinking, like. Like it's motherfucking Kool Aid. Like this shit is fucking crazy. Sprite. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> we dirty sprite. Like we never actually question the entertainment aspect of any of this shit and like how fucked up people are and what they're actually saying in these songs. It's like if you put a beat behind it, you can say some of the craziest mm -hmm. shit. Nigga, Hitler could have been a rapper. All he needed was <laughs> all he needed was the eight oh eight mafia. And he would have been out here 100K. 808. Yeah. 808. Eight off. Yeah. yeah. I got, um, Metro, got Metro booming and Zaytoven on production. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, oh, shit. Like. London on the track. Yeah. This, like, but it sounds, no, it's true. it sounds it's true. absurd, but we live in a world today where 
it's like the worst shit is the most entertaining shit. And I don't know if it's always been like that, but kind of watching these artists, kind of watching these artists just fizzle out, it's like, it's something different because you grow up with these people. You know what I'm saying? So it's like 98, I was like with like 12, maybe like 12, 13 years old. So it's like me listening to DMX or UGK or just mm -hmm. any of those artists, you know, like late nineties, early two thousands, Tupac, Biggie. It's almost like these people are like, they create the soundtrack to my life. Some of the songs in this in said soundtrack is very dark and depressing. But I mean like- A lot of them. Yeah, majority of them are, but shit. It's almost like it's relatable. So, I mean, like, like I say, as the audience, like we never fathom how bad this shit really is. You know, it's like, but that's, that's exactly what it is. It's relatable. That's why that's your favorite song on the radio or you buying the whole album because you can relate to this artist's trauma. It resonates with you to a certain way and, and you're going to follow their whole journey, whether it's right or wrong. You just feel like, oh, okay, this artist real, this some real shit right here. You know, he talking about stuff I can relate to or I see every day. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, it, it, it makes you look at it like authenticity is oftentimes a very dark thing. Like to be authentic mm -hmm. is nothing. It ain't, it, it, it really doesn't resonate with the positives. It, it's almost to a degree. It's not like, always beautiful. Yeah. It's like, this is some really sad and depressing shit that people are going through. It's real, but it's like, it's real bad. It's, mm. it's kind of like the idea of like what it means to be a real nigga. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like being a real nigga is just being fucking destructive. Like when people call you a real nigga, it's like, bro, you just like whatever it means to be a real nigga. It's like, it just means to be something really fucking bad. Like if you really look at it, like what it like you to be a real nigga, you got to bust your gun. So I got to kill somebody. You know, yeah. to be a real nigga, I got to... And then go make a song about it. Yeah. So it's like, to be a real nigga, you got to, you got to be down for your niggas. And your niggas are coming to you asking you to do some of the worst shit in the world. Like, bro, drive this car while I do a drive-by. Or come around the corner and help yeah. me beat this nigga up. And you be like, well, what did he do to you? Oh, nothing. I just want to make an example out of him. Yeah. Uh, you a real nigga. And hey. now you, you being subjected to this type of lifestyle. Yeah, it's almost like being real means the negative or the worst shit. And I think, like, when you look at, like, when people say DMX is a real one, like, when they say that, what do they mean about his life? Like, when you talk about an artist and you say that they real or they're authentic, are we heralding them for the good things when we say real? Or do we say, well, he a real one because... He bust his guns, or he got it, niggas, or this and the third whoop the whoop. It's almost like he got it out the mud. Yeah, it's like none of this shit is fucking sexy or cute. It's like, bro, I mean, America and the audience in general, like, we got a really bad habit of making some of the most darkest, nastiest shit cute. Like, yeah, it's just like strippers, bro. Like, that's how I feel. Like, that's like stripping is a dark occupation. But that shit is fucking mm -hmm. sexy. Nigga. The ambiance is, oh, There's God. There's so many things that go on <laughs> in the stripping world. We're talking about safety. We talk about girls working, trying to pay through college. Mm -mm. You know, they got kids. There's so many levels to that. But all you see is a girl on the pole busting it wide open oh, and yes, somebody's Lord, going one. And then. And they, I, I <laughs> and they playing ones. the hottest new song that just dropped in your in your neighborhood. That's my song. In the strip club, <laughs> you get to play in the strip club. You get a uh, you know what number one single playing in the strip club. You didn't pop because your song is in the strip club. There's so much shit go down in the strip club. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna make. You, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a positive song and put it in the strip club. I'm gonna be you like, should. girl, go keep Up your GPA. <laughs> Girl, keep your GPA. Keep your legs and your GPA up. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. Oh my. Better twerk them grades. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Twerking on the exam. Ooh, twerking on the exam. Ooh, twerking on the exam. Ooh. <laughs> Left cheek, right cheek. Oh, 
As long as you got a dope ass beat, it's gonna go. You already know. You know. You see P Valley. You uh-huh. see P Valley. He made a whole song about the stripper. M I Crickleta Crickleta I. He made a whole song about her, and it went. He, that wasn't the only motherfucker he made a song about. But <laughs> either your either your booty or your life. <laughs> Shut up. Can I call my mom? Let me, you got a phone? Ooh. Can I call my mama? <laughs> Oh Lord. That's a no for me. <laughs> but yeah, You're like crazy. I mean, you know, but getting back on topic, I think that um uh, yeah, <laughs> like as an audience, like we have to be more conscientious of the things that we mm-hmm. consume and you know, the things that we accept from people. I get it, you know what I'm saying? Like art is just it, it's an expression and it doesn't always have to be dark. But we need to understand and acknowledge, like, these songs with this dark subject matter oftentimes leads people that we grow to love to a place where they're not even in control of their lives. It's almost encouraged. Yeah, it's like, yeah, man, come on, keep, so, nigga, smoke that crack and, and, and make another album, nigga. I like this shit when you be high and on them drugs. Yeah, nigga, I like that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, like, like. You talking about lean and your song. And shooting people, and this is the song that gets the best reaction from the world. So why would you not keep making music about that? Yeah, and it's like you look at it like this, like even when it like going back to X for a minute. So when you listen to a song like what these what these bitches want, right? And he's sitting up here naming mm-hmm. all of these different females, like you gotta understand mm-hmm. the whole point of rap is to be authentic. This nigga this nigga really not like what if he actually knew all those women and had some type of relationship with all those women like yeah he a real yeah. nigga for that but it's almost like you see that you see the other side of that equation where it's like he had like how many kids like 12 or 15 or i don't was, know i think it was up 15 or 17. yeah so it's like this man had a lot of kids and you listen mm-hmm. to the song and it sounds like that like the song is fucking amazing like which is also acceptable in the rap community don't hate me don't hate you you know yeah people having a bunch of kids different baby mamas yeah i mean you know i mean that's a popular thing i mean sex is you know it it, it is presented territory yeah but i mean that's one of them things but like you can say the same goddamn thing about r&b you cannot name an r&b album well (laughs) If it got 12 songs on there, 11 of the motherfuckers is about fucking. And they might make us song. Bedroom, bedroom bangers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we ain't going to just throw this off on hip hop. We going to be like the misogyny. No, I wasn't talking about the promotion of, you know, sexuality. I was talking about having 15, 17 kids yeah, but- with multiple baby mamas in the rap industry. But I mean, like when you look at that song, it's like if, if when you look at the song in comparison to his life, you see the authenticity there. So it's almost mm-hmm. like he was doing a lot of fucking, and <laughs> it's almost like even that in itself isn't a good, isn't necessarily a good thing. It isn't bad. Like sex isn't bad, but it's like okay, if you're out here, you're doing a lot of it, and you're creating a lot of people without actually sustaining the relationship between you know yeah. the actual person you created this human being with so it's like you know 15 kids isn't bad 15 different baby what? mamas is bad i mean you can have as many kids as you want if we were in the 1930s and 40s yeah they was having 15 kids like it was nothing but but nowadays i mean 15 kids you having at least how many baby mamas because i'm not pushing out 15 kids you don't know what you how can do until you, you try. Got, how, many, <laughs> how many baby mamas you got divided over 15 kids, you think? What's a reasonable amount? What? I mean, like, the point you're making is, like, yeah, it might be <laughs> physically impossible for one woman to have 15 kids. And you're going to be real sore. How about that? Like, <laughs> this shit is not, like, no, man. Something's... You got at least, at least three baby mamas. Yeah, but That's my, five kids each. But yeah, okay. So my thing is this: like, okay, um, having the kids isn't bad, but kind of actually maneuvering around. Like, if you got fifteen kids and you got 
nine, ten baby mamas. Like right, and two a, of them is both the same age. Yeah, it, it is a, in the, on, on a certain level. It's an indicator that like uh you know promiscuity that isn't a good thing. Like you might not be building relationships with these people because you're just here to like create life and then move on. You're trying to populate the earth or something. I don't know, but and you have the money to support or afford these multiple kids well, while you're on the go. Well, yeah, I mean, as long as you're able to do that, then I don't think the world looks at it like it's a negative problem or it's like a bad problem. Because if we want to talk about it, a lot of people shouldn't be having one kid because they, they can't afford it. <laughs> so it's, it's that type of thing. If you got the resources to do it and that show, and you desire to do it, I mean, if at the end of the day you're a good parent, that's fine. But we, like, not to get too far away from the topic, it's like, you know, a lot of artists are living these things that they're talking about and we see the negative right. effects, but we kind of just brush it because it's entertaining or because it's entertaining an audience. We just be like, we're like, well, okay. So it's almost like when you look at bad, but the artists with bad behavior, it's like, even when you like, we can switch the focus to somebody like R. Kelly It's like, yeah, we love these love songs. Like, man, half on a baby is my fucking jam. Like, especially when they break down from my toes to my kneecap, kneecap to face, I'm slowly. Ooh. Hey, man, that, well, hey, I love that you part. Like, that's my most, like, that when it, that the shit get good. But when it comes out and it's like, you know, we see these things happening. Like, People knew him and Aaliyah were married. It's like now they bring right. it back up because it's uh it's politically, you know, the times that we live in. It's almost like it's a witch hunt. But we knew when it happened. You know, the world knew mm -hmm. when it happened. So it was like, yeah, like you know, Aaliyah go with R. Kelly, and like, but ain't she a certain age? Like, yeah, but and then people just be like, well, back. It kind of got swept under the rug. Yeah, so it, it turns into a thing. It turns into a thing where it's like, um, it, it turns into something like what well, we turn a blind eye to it, even though it's there and it's affecting. And, and we know, and when you actually listen to his story, and he says like, "Oh shit, I was molested as a child," and it's like right. this shit fuck you up, bro. And it's like we shouldn't have been listening. Like the songs are cool, but. We didn't even understand before he got off into all of that. Like, bro, this man experienced something in his childhood, and he might be writing them songs from that Mama. place. Yeah, so it's like, mm -hmm. as an audience, we don't do an investigation and be like, bro, what made you write this? Like, it's a, it could be a great song, but it's like, what made you write this song? Because you could be going through something using this medium as theory. Yeah, but it really a fucking cry for help. It just sound good. Mm -hmm. The crying sound good over this motherfucking melody. Like, nigga, mm -hmm. this crying is sexy right now. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, <laughs> when it comes to entertainment, when it comes to being a part of the audience, we are just looking at it as entertainment. And But when we start to find out the lives of these artists, it's not entertainment. This shit is a fucking cry for it's help. It's a tragedy. Yeah, like niggas is niggas is going through fucking pain and they fucked up and we just keep tapping our feet to the beat. It's like at a certain point, it's like yeah, those like yeah, the artists are damaged, but we're probably more fucked up than they are because mm. on a so like on, on a on a real life level, we look at that stuff and we know, we know. So we know, and it's like, it's, it, it, it turns into something where it's like, it's not good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we got to do better. Yeah, we do. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, Just Nick, put it all on the track. Uh, yeah, no, nah, nah, I think motherfuckers really need to be like, they might need to see, like, I, I think at a certain point, I mean... I, I think Joe Budden is like Joe Budden is somebody that's an advocate really mm -hmm. for like therapy and he's an artist, yeah. Well, he was an artist, but I will say this. I think that that's something that needs to be offered to all artists. Like you need, you need like 
uh, a therapist in the with the that come with these record labels, like or yeah, like you got your road manager and you got your therapist. Let's yeah. go on tour. Yeah, cause this shit that you making, it's almost like somebody needs to be there to check because we understand. Like, I mean, we just have to concede that as an audience, we like bad shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, we like for our we like for our artists to we like for our artists to go through shit. We like for them to talk about it. it's relatable to us. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But more than it being relatable, it's entertaining. But mm. you know that's not good for people in the long run. You know, and, and it's something that expands across just all forms of entertainment. Like you know, like when you look at like most comedians, like comedy is fucking depressing. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of a lot because they're talking about their experiences, and those are the funniest moments. Yeah, but then they have They're to, talking about the trauma things they went through and it's making everybody laugh. It's hilarious because we all know it's true and it's relatable. We've been through the shit too. Yeah. So it's like the trauma, like like the things that people do with their pain and their trauma, you know, sometimes it's entertaining, you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes it creates a great story. Sometimes you laugh at it, sometimes you cry with it. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, artists or people really at the end of the day that can take an experience and invoke an emotion you know for uh, from an audience that's really what they are um in, in essence and it's like entertainers do need they, they they do need that that they do need checks and balances you know what i'm saying like they do need someone that they can actually get the shit out without it being with, with without it being something that someone else consumes so it's like it's less mm -hmm. about it's, it's less about, you know, it's less about it being entertaining and more about it just being helpful to the, the artist. Art. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, that's my take mm -hmm. on it. So, how you feel about it? Because I know I've been, I've been going on and on. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I think, I think you handled the topic very well. Um, I think we need to normalize you know, mental health in the, in the rap industry. I, and a lot of people feel like, you know, they don't need therapy because like you said, they're just going to put it on the track. Mm -hmm. They're going to go in the booth, they're going to zone out, and they're going to get it off. But it don't, it don't go away. It don't stop there. You're going to go back to what you was doing right after you get out the studio. Yeah, yeah. Just create another monster. Yeah, no, you just, you, you created something to kind of appease uh, appease the masses you know what i'm saying so it's like mm -hmm. I, I mean and this is something that actually like you're an actress so i know well people in in the pod they might not know that but you are an actress um and this is something that i've seen now more than like i've seen act actri actors actually talk about mm -hmm more now than they have ever talked about it they always talk about this period like when they have to go through counseling to decompress when they take on these yes. roles so it's like when um yes so it's like um it, was it Heath Heath Ledger when he did the, the Joker like like oh yeah uh -huh. he had to go through counseling uh, um I, I know a lot of people like I think Michael B Jordan has done it uh, pretty much all actors in Hollywood now they when get they, so attached to yeah. the role. That's some good acting right there. Yeah, but I mean, like, so when we see that, we don't, we we never actually transpose that on to other forms of art and say that okay, you a comedian, you tell jokes, but you need to decompress, like because. Mm -hmm. The shit that you make because if you don't then you actually live in that you live in that space too long to that like you don't know the difference between reality and your art and like i said before like that's something that needs to happen across all forms of art where people can just decompress and kind of get that off of them you know what i'm saying yeah they say um like some of the best actors have the most trauma because they have somewhere to pull that pain from and it comes off on screen so beautifully. You know, you see people in the audience crying because they're watching the scene. It's like that actor is they pushing that pain through the screen and that's what you're feeling. Yeah, and and I think it's a thing where, you know, that happens and sometimes these roles and these characters, like they are real. 
So you know when somebody mm -hmm. writes and when, when when somebody's writing a character, and and someone has to take what's on paper and transition it on, on a medium like they literally ingest this idea or this this psychological state of what it means to be this person that's on this paper and artists take that they interpolate it they interpret it and it becomes a part of them like that thing is real yeah so it's like uh when when someone does the joker on screen like when joaquin phoenix did like this nigga is losing his fucking mind on camera like right like you can't turn that off you can't just be like okay i'm gonna be crazy now and then i'm not gonna be crazy i'm gonna have mm -hmm. a i'm gonna have a mental i'm gonna have a mental schism it's like you can't turn that on or off um a lot of artists uh I'm, well i mean a lot of actors that play those like you know when they play those narratives in different roles like slave roles or whatnot you know people like actors will come back and tell you like they feel that like when they take on that role like no nigga like you can't just like act and be a person like these like, people turn it are, on and turn it off yeah like they're really literally invoking these spirits they're invoking the the words on these pages they're invoking these characters and these characters are real you know what i'm saying to the yeah so, so much so to the point where even at the artists, even at the actors or actresses are done with those roles, people still come up to them on the street and they still calling them their name. Yeah, so it's like, no, this motherfucker's real and he exists. He exists in the minds mm -hmm. and hearts of the actors as well as the people that consume that content. And I, I think, like, you know, like not to get too far away from the point again, it's like mm -hmm. this is something that, like, I, I, I think that people across all mediums when it comes to art they really do need someone to talk to to kind of decompress and get that off because i think that dmx the character dmx the guy mm -hmm. that you hear on those records like yeah him and the man are you know they they're tethered together they have similarities but like he yeah at the end of the day he's still earl simmons yeah so it's, it's almost like earl simmons needs to decompress from dmx like it's not a mm -hmm. it's not an alias that you're creating like that like DMX is a real fucking person, and it's like DMX may have been the reason that Earl died. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because we mm -hmm. we love DMX. We love what he stands for, all the glory and just all this crazy nigga shit. And it's like, but Earl, man, Earl is fucked up. Like Earl experienced these things and created this identity of what DMX is, and it's like. Now all those things are pushed off on DMX, but you can't do that neither. They occupy the same space. So DMX and Earl, right. they're living like like that's duality, and it's almost like yeah, you know, you don't know, and we don't know on the outside looking in if he had someone to talk to or, or, or done the you know therapy thing. I know when he did that shit with Ayanla, that shit was funny. But Ooh. even even then, like like this is some fucking depressing. Like that shit is terrible. <laughs> But it was fucking hilarious. Like, this is the funniest it, shit ever. It was entertaining, to say the least. Yeah, so it's like, but then we fucked up for that, too, because we, like, you're looking at someone right. that has an issue, and we just sit back and we watch it. You know what I'm saying? And, like... Mm -hmm. Well, what can you do? Uh, as a, as a, the audience, as a fan... What do you do? Do you stop supporting the music? Do you, you know, like, I think you're just going to ride the wave with them to I mean, some extent. I mean, yeah, we do. Like, that's what we do as an audience. We just sit back and wait for the next scene. Um, I think we just, like, I think we have to do what we're doing now. We have to normalize, like, look, if you are an artist mm -hmm. and you taking on these things and you expressing these things to the world, you know, talking to us is great as an audience but you do need to talk to you you do need to seek a therapist so that you can you can further detach yourself from this this persona or this idea of self that you've created so, and deal with some of your own shit apart from that it's almost like it's almost like you know batman and bruce wayne it's like we love mm -hmm. batman 
but Bruce Wayne, the man, is like, oh, shit, this nigga might be going through, he going through some shit that turned him into that. So it's like you need to talk to somebody so that when you put this costume on, you know, this thing that's real, it doesn't actually latch on to you and, and follow you in your personal life. You know what I'm saying? That man, that man is an entire character. There's a whole world about Batman. Yeah. And this man wears a mask the entire time. Yeah, but he's I, able to create a whole world and a character under a mask, behind a mask. Yeah, so it, it, it's, it's that like, says a lot. <laughs> it's always that duality with like even when you look at something like superheroes and people might be like, well, these are just comics and these are just something people created, but they come from real places. It's a duality. It's always a duality there. Whether it's whether it's a person taking on this persona to uh, to fight bad, or whether it's a, a, a alien taking on villain. well, well, whether it's an alien like when you, when you look at Superman, it's almost like he's an alien. Like he was he was born mm -hmm. Superman, but he puts on a costume to be normal to fit in, versus like mm -hmm. Batman being born normal putting on his costume to fight crime so it's it's almost like on a certain level it's the inverse either way but the the core the core idea is that this duality exists where people are being two things trying to juggle being two different things and you look at art it's the same way like artists like you know when, when you're artists you're creative like you take on a persona or idea what you you, you know what you want to express to the world and then when you're done like when you go when you leave off the stage and you ain't rapping no more then right you have to leave whatever that persona is there and that's the problem it's almost like you know it'll be able to separate the two yeah but then, but then what happens is people don't separate the two so we we that's why we're watching these artists spiral out of control because they don't know how to say well okay this is in, this is art. This is entertainment. I can get on the stage, perform, and do this. But when I'm not on this stage doing this, I don't have to be this person. So it's almost like you know when when Pimp C when Pimp C was drinking lean in the hotel. It's like is he Pimp C or is he Chad Butler? You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's like it's that type of thing. You know, like when Whitney Houston is on the stage singing the song. When she's in the bathtub, is she Whitney the singer or is she Whitney Houston the person? Like, I don't think that sometimes, like, you got to realize when you commit to the art, the difference between reality and this this fictional world you created, it's no difference. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, nigga, we exist in both worlds. And I think that's to the detriment, that's going to always be to the detriment of the artist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that reminds me of um, the Billy Holiday movie that just came out with Andrea Day. I don't know if you had a chance to see that, mm -hmm. but they do a good job of, of portraying the, the both sides of the world. You know, she had to play. She was struggling with this drug addiction and this issue the whole way through. And people didn't see that when she was on stage and she opened her mouth. People didn't get to see that. That movie, I think, is a great example of what we're talking about. Yeah. She's Billy Holiday on stage and off stage but billy holiday had a drug addiction that was out of this world and, and you know that that brings up a, a good question like as an audience do we love these people or do we love the idea that these people persona. portray yeah like do we love the people or the persona and, mm. and that mm. and that's something we have to really that's something we have to really look at as an audience like i know we're here to be entertained but these are people so we don't look at our we don't look at our mothers, our fathers, our friends. You know what I'm saying? We don't look at people around us in that way. We don't say, "Well, shit, nigga, I only like you because of your persona." Like, no, like I love you for the person that you are. But when it comes to artists and entertainers, do we love them for the people that they are, or do we love them simply because of the persona that they present to us? Like, and, and the persona gives us entertainment. So it's almost like, mm -hmm. you know, what the fuck? Are, what the fuck are we doing as an audience? <sighs> I, I think that brings up a perfect segue 
into our next topic. Okay, go ahead. Speaking of personas and people loving the person versus loving the persona, I have to say Derek Jackson. Yeah. That, nah, that, that is, no, I, I hate He's both. He's still of, human at the end of the day. No, nah, I hate both of them motherfuckers. How about that? <laughs> Fuck both of them motherfuckers. No, because, like, no, really. Like, we're going to get into this shit. Let's do it. Bro, nigga, I'm, every time I log on Facebook, and you know, you be scrolling down, looking at these different videos and shit, and he come on now. Women, you should not allow yourself to be devalued by a man. Me and the, uh, they breathe. Well, meanwhile, they, you devaluing men. Uh, you devaluing you devaluing all the women. Yeah, so it's on some, it's on some <laughs> shit where it's like, bro, look, man, he be talking crazy about niggas, like real crazy, and then you know the shit come to the light, and it's like, nigga, you worse than we are. So it was like it was this thing was like, and I hate that too. Like I hate what I dislike about that whole thing, and it's not him because well, I don't like that nigga neither. Right. I don't like. So, so you- <laughs> I don't like that nigga neither. But the period. Thing, yeah, the shit that fucks with me is that you know you can give people something that they desire. So women desire this. Like they desire this view of themselves where it's like we can do no wrong. It's you niggas that are terrible. You you know, people yeah. never people never stop to, to fathom or think about it that these niggas ain't out here doing this shit by themselves. They doing it with other women. And then it's sisterhood, right. this crazy nut ass sisterhood shit. It's like, no, bro, you are not you are not without fault. And the problem is, is that he's someone that's pandering to the audience and he's not telling women the truth. He's not saying that, look, bro, if you pick the nigga that ain't shit, then that's on you. It's not on the men. Mm. It's not for a man to be like, well, you know, she did pick me even though I ain't shit. So maybe I should wake up and be something like, no, like that's not how life works. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like you're going to get what you choose if you choose an ain't shit person then you're gonna get an ain't shit person but my problem with him was that he was creating and painting this narrative that men should right. acquiesce and be into the wheel of women and he was he wasn't practicing what he preached yeah and he was enabling the bad behavior in women that he was doing his goddamn self so it turned into a thing where like when the truth come out and it's like nigga you on this fuck shit too then it's like the truth hurt don't it yeah, I mean, I knew the motherfucker was a fraud because it, it was just bullshit coming out of his <laughs> mouth. Like, no, nah, that's a fucking lie. This nigga just, this nigga just get on. This nigga will get in front of the camera and fucking lie. And people will eat He's these lies. their persona. Yeah, like, people will eat these lies because it alleviates guilt off of them. It ain't like, oh, you ain't responsible for none of the shit that happened go wrong, go bad in your life. Like, no, nah, you can defer all your fuck shit to me. A man? Bitches, you crazy? <laughs> hey, how um, you really feel? No, that, uh, that, uh, that's how I feel. Because it's like, <laughs> don't defer your bad behavior and your negative choices on me and then say that I'm not shit. Because you like... like Could come out and confess to be doing the same old thing you was criticizing folks? Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, but not even before we even get into him it's like you know it, it kind of it, it goes but it ties into what i was saying before it's like okay look at it like this like even as an audience like we like bad shit like i can say i like bad things because i'm honest you know what i'm saying it's like mm-hmm. i like i like for my rappers to do drugs and all this other like i don't want you to die but at the same time it's like man this is like that would make the best songs. Like when you fucked up and you be you be going off the reels and you insane and crazy. I know it ain't good for you, like it ain't good for me. And I care about you as mm-hmm. a person. And I would like for you to separate that. But I still like these bad things. The problem with this society in this day and time, when it comes to women, um, they just like the reassurance. Or they like for people to tell them it's not their fault, even when they do things wrong, even when they make bad decisions. You know, people like to be, people like to be reinforced with the idea that you know what, yeah, some bad shit happened, but you know what, that bad shit wasn't your fault. So people don't like accountability. Well, you know, women. Ooh, that's a big word. Yeah. Accountability. 
so and and I don't like the fact that he was the like he created content that deferred accountability and then we get to this place where it's like bruh you are out here doing super shady shit throwing men under the bus when the men that you were throwing now under it's the bus, your turn yeah no the man that he was throwing under the bus was his fucking self Ass yeah hole. he wrote several books you know about relationships and you know cheating men's hearts and just stuff that make you wonder like okay he was writing this about you Mm -hmm. You were speaking from experience. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> he was speaking, you know, personally. The goddamn fornicator. And then he come out, you know, he, he did come out and apologize. Apologize? <laughs> no, motherfucker. No, I want mine in blood, nigga. <laughs> Fuck what you talking about. <laughs> you know what? I he did. He did come out, you know, and apologize. You know it's what? important to apologize. Own up to when you're wrong. I wish we was in the 1700s <laughs> so we could have brought his ass out down to the court. Stoned his ass? No, we're going to tear his ass up with his whip. And then, then look, hey, while he, while, he strapped, while he strapped to the post, badly beating, clinging on for dear life, the, uh, oh my God. the man with the whip going to walk up behind him gently. You're going to hear the storm in the background. <laughs> Looking like it's getting ready to rain. It's a quiet storm. And as the whipper approaches Derek Jackson, he says it in a real smooth and mellow voice. Your booty or your life. Uh, stop it. Oh my God. Someone write a letter yeah, to my so mother. Someone write a letter to my mother. He gonna have a British accent. Oh, oh, governor. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. We have so many people in the comments like, what was y'all talking about with this booty are your life stuff? I don't know. I just I just don't know if you could be a relationship guru or whatever he calls himself these days and be out here cheating. You know, you should have just kept that to yourself. I, I, I think we live in You should have just kept that one to yourself. Or we could accept the fact that he's human too. I mean, people make people make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Yeah, but okay, so you're human, but then we have to ask a real life question. Like, okay, um, are you, are you just, uh, like, are you the person to even be giving advice on this thing? Because right. It, it's what makes not, you qualified? Yeah, it, it's it, it's different than entertainment. You know what I'm saying? It's different than, than entertainment in the sense is that people are looking to you for guidance on their lives so the responsibility is different and you know that's why a lot of artists always defer and be like well shit this is entertainment i'm not here to raise your kids even though people listen to this shit and they grow up and then go out and they do it at the end of the day you can always you always kind of have like as a as an artist you have the creative license of saying well it's just art you interpret it and take whatever you want from it how you want to it's not my job to tell you how to interpret the art it's just my job to create it and whatever you get from it is what you get from it so it, it alleviates the artist of that responsibility versus someone that's an actual coach like yeah you're responsible because you're giving people direction in regards to their life so that's a different type of thing it's almost like yeah i can i can accept the fact that you're human and you're not perfect but you are in a position where you're giving instructions on life so you have to be held to a different standard and you standard yeah mm -hmm. because this responsibility that you hold directly in, impacts people so all the women like you you gotta think about how many lives he had how many female lives he's destroyed by giving them that bogus information because these people now wake mm -hmm. up and go outside in the world and it's like man you know this shit ain't working for them and the reason why this shit ain't working is because you listening to some shit from a whacked out liar and he just eat <laughs> what the fuck it is and it's like well you know it's not, the name calling for me now nah, nah, that's the truth <laughs> it's, the tr it's the truth for me he is wet. like nigga you is crazy nigga you out here talking like this and then you living like that nigga is she crazy <laughs> yeah nah are you finished or are you done yeah that nah that nigga crazy. he needs to be done mm -hmm. 
That remind me of Kevin uh, Samuels, but that's a conversation for another day. Hey, Kevin Samuels. Hey, man, this nigga right. Hey, this nigga <laughs> he nigga ruthless. Right too. Nah, he be tripping too. I seen a video of this motherfucker. Let me tell you what he gonna ask another man. He is Talk ruthless. about some. Talk about some. How big is your dick? I'm like, oh, oh, oh yeah. That <laughs> so this dude that called lover, he gonna answer. Thomas like, how big is it? First of all, he got stuck. <laughs> And then he gonna just ask him, ask him again, like, yeah, how big is you? Like, he asking like he wanna know, like, like now. And then he, he told the man, well, if you don't know the answer, then it ain't big. Yeah, so I'm like, <laughs> man, you got, first of all, you got to chill out, bro, because, see, that's the kind of question that, you know, I don't think no man should ask another. Not everybody, like, yeah, know how to accept that. I don't know, I don't care if you're a coach or nothing, like, at no point in time is it ever okay for a man to ask another man how big is it? I, you know what? Even gay niggas shouldn't even ask each other that. If a gay, <laughs> I know that's what you into, but bro, you just, you just, y'all gonna get to it when you get. Don't ask that man that. Don't do that. I'm just saying, just across he the board. That man. Yeah, yeah, go on, just. But, but my point, my point is, what makes Kevin Samuels qualified to be out here giving? this very detrimental advice like harsh advice to people i mean you you have to understand like and and, and to be honest with you like i don't think he actually and, and and that's the real tricky part of what he does it's like he's not giving people advice he's not giving people actual direction he's just giving a, an assessment it's like he asks mm -hmm. questions about people's lives like uh, the lives of women and then he just forms an assessment is it harsh yeah based but off we, what you tell him mm -hmm. yeah but it, it's, it's almost like okay um you know like vegetables don't taste good but you have to eat them in order to be healthy and strong so it's like things that are <laughs> good for you aren't necessarily aren't necessarily good going down and you know what like we're like he's not talking to kids he's talking to adults so these people can take it so it's almost like you know a lot of people call him up with a sense of entitlement and he just gives like he asks knock him down well not knock him <laughs> down but he just asks information and he gives you an assessment on said information so it's one of them things was like even when he was asking to do how big it can be it's like bro <laughs> he was like but that's they're being honest like women do like a like you know what i'm saying like motherfucker, like like look man when you look at some of them goddamn tall ass man this shit, shit larger than life man you got a life size what the fuck I is can't. this like motherfucker be like i'm gone right <laughs> like so you, you don't you don't think that some of the stuff kevin samuel says is unnecessary i mean like it like could he could he find a better way to say it yeah but more important than finding a better way to say it, it's like like i like the thing is like this the truth just is so it doesn't matter if you find uh a a, a a a nice way to say the truth it don't matter if the way that you give your truth uh, or you way you give the truth is <laughs> abrasive it's like so that, that that like for example like say like you got something that you love like let's say you got a let's say you got a pet bird you know what i'm saying and you done went to work and somebody bird. watching your bird and somebody say, well, you know, uh, Shalice, I got it. You know, I'm calling you. I got some bad news, man. Your bird is no longer <laughs> with us. And versus somebody said, hey, Shalice, man, look, this motherfucking crazy cat. He flew out the door. Yeah, like the bird <laughs> flew out the door and got snatched out the air by a cat. And then he gone. He dead. So it don't it don't matter what's being said the the thing that people don't like when it comes to kevin samuel is he like him giving him giving women the truth so women come to him and they have this information and they have these demands and he just lays it out he does the assessment of the woman and be like well you're not qualified to have said thing and people don't like that because i'm gonna but tell you something. okay i'm gonna tell you something about women right it doesn't matter if a woman is qualified for something or not qualified for something. The entitlement all women have ultimately, like every every woman wants a billionaire. So it's like, it doesn't what? matter if she's fat. It doesn't matter if she I'm doesn't right have there. all her limbs. None of these actually I'm gonna stop, matters. I'm going to stop you right there because now you're being ridiculous. Ha, so you mean to tell me you got... <laughs> it don't matter if she have all her limbs. Look, 
look, she, you I got female, you got female friends that'll be like, you know what, man? Uh, you'll be like, you nah, y'all get dressed up, y'all get ready to go out to the club, and you'll meet, you know what I'm saying? You know your home girl ain't got no chance to get no man that night, but guess what? <laughs> guess what? You gonna still be like, okay. Oh, yeah, girl, you can go out and you can get your man. And so it's the sense of entitlement. I think that when he when he puts truth in front of entitlement, people people consider that harsh or they consider it mean or nasty because some now someone is just reaffirming the truth. Like, you're not fine enough to get the thing you want. And as men, I'm going to tell you something. As men, we understand that we have to have something in order to get these women. So that means that. Not all of you. I mean, look, well, I mean, shit, at the end of the day, it just depends on what that particular Not all of you. Want. So it's like, I'm, but I'm <laughs> making a point. So let me make my point, right? So oh, go ahead. as a man, like, if women like men that are good talkers, we have to be good orators. So we have to be able to speak a certain type of way. Some women are attracted to the way men speak. Some women are attracted to the way men dress. So you got to be like, you know, I got mm -hmm. to, you know, I got to know what shirt go with what shoes and the pants. So I got to go actually go out and get those resources and present them to the women. Some women like money. So that means that I have to work on my job, get some money. And then when I pull up in a nice vehicle or I got a nice place to stay or I can go out and buy drinks and buy this food and all these other different things, women are attracted to that. See, it really, at the end of the day, women are attracted to what men have to offer. Women, conversely, are attracted to what men, uh, like... When it comes to like like women want men to be not be attracted to what they have to offer or don't have to offer, they want men to be attracted to them. You know what I'm saying? And that's where the fucking Jedi mind. Do you goes. mean? Do you mean? Do you mean physically? I mean, like, yeah, like, so look. At the end of the day, as a man, it's like, okay, well, shit. If I like ass and titties, then you know, yeah, I know it's superficial, it's shallow. Once again, I'm able to clearly identify some fucked up shit with me. Uh. But I know oh it. I, I know it's not the best thing. I know I shouldn't be going out in the world being like, "Oh, she got big titties and big." Ass. But I like it though. I like it. <laughs> so you saying, you saying every woman wants a billionaire, and I, they feel entitled to that? Well, I feel now. Well, what I'm saying is that not every woman wants a billionaire, but or they're every, not. They're not qualified. Yeah, to but, have a billionaire, even though they want one. Yeah, even though they're unqualified, even so, it's like this: even unqualified women want things that they aren't qualified for. That's just a general right. idea. It's like a me. job. It's like a job when you go for a job, you know. And men, there's a lot of men who want a woman with a big ass, but mm -hmm. they're not qualified to have that woman with the big ass. Well, what you got to do to get a woman with a big old ass? Then let me know. <laughs> you got to be qualified. Well, what's the qualification you gotta, then? What's the qualification to get a billionaire? So what the fuck, what, what I got to do? Go on, on Indeed.com or Monster or something? <laughs> what I got to do? Change? You better update your resume. Yeah, be like, oh, I'm going to go to Indeed and type in big ass and see what the qualification is. <laughs> oh, I got to have a, I got to and have if a it bachelor's ain't a match, degree. It ain't a match. Be like, I got to have a bachelor's degree in computer science. Well, I guess, hmm. Mm, I'm just saying, uh, I think. I think saying that you, you feel entitled to have a billionaire and being qualified to have a billionaire, like that's two totally different things. The fact that you feel entitled is going to get you out of the billionaire's club regardless. Nobody's attracted to that. Nobody's well, attracted to somebody with an entitled personality. Like you feel like this is yours and you're supposed to have it just because you said so. No, I don't you'll know. never, you'll never get, you won't even, you won't even get a millionaire. I don't know. With that attitude. If you got a big ass. But then you're talking you about qualifications. Entitled. That's a whole nother conversation. We can talk about that all day. Because what, what, who's who's to set the standard? Who's setting the qualifications? Well, I mean, that depends on a person that actually have, has what you want. So it's almost like... The billionaire. It's the billionaire's qualifications. Yes. Or the girl with the big ass's qualifications. Yeah, it's her qualification. What you want? That what I... I shit, nowadays, I'm, I, I get to the point. See a big old ass, I'd be like, ooh, what you want? What you want? Let's you make it straight up. Yeah, either I got it or I don't. But I want what I want. <laughs> and now you gotta you gotta you gotta question the answer. <laughs> your booty or your life. 
<laughs> and I don't have a phone. I think we should name this segment Your Booty or Your Life. Your Booty or Your Life. Then. Shit, at the end of the day, then what the fuck it gonna be? Now you got Speaking of booty. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of booty. You know where I'm going with this? Okay, let's go there. <laughs> Speaking of booty, Little Nas X. <laughs> well, we know which one he picked. He didn't call his mama. <laughs> he chose the high road. <laughs> no, yeah, the, the, the road, uh, oh, the Hershey God. Highway. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. That's nasty. We're going to move on. Um, <laughs> you moved here. So now we got to talk about it. Well, Nike Nike released a statement mm -hmm. and said that they were not affiliated in any way, shape, or form with his release of his air. What were they? Don't quote me. The, the Satan X is something. Mm. Nike said they didn't want no parts of that. The Dante's Inferno. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> the Damien Sixes. <laughs> Damien. Yeah, yeah. He was on Demon Time. He really was. But um, yeah, I think I think there's a way to express your sexuality, you know, and and do it freely and have no shame and and be proud of who you are. But I feel like the whole demonic part of it, and him bringing the devil out and putting a drop of blood in the shoes, quote unquote, that's when people was like, okay, we ain't with you on this one. You lost us. No, I, and I I, I agree. Um, because when it comes to, so like, and, and this is something like, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to get into religion or nothing like that, but right. we all have to understand that we can't fathom what is right and wrong in the minds of God and what we will be judged on when we leave this earth. I got a good idea. Yes. I got a good idea, but, um, it's nothing actually written in stone, so to speak. Um, and we already know that like the Bible is just man's interpretation. Well, yeah, it, it's like man's interpretation <laughs> of God. So it's, it's, it's not like, and then you got to think about it too. If you God and you omnipotent, like you ain't going to be writing no shit in like, you know what I'm saying? Like nigga, you create <laughs> language. Like this shit should be in like some alien type of language. It should be in something that we as people can't understand or decipher because this is the language of God, even though God can communicate with us. You know, the way he freestyle, the way he freestyle and write his lyrics down on the paper should be totally different than us. It shouldn't look like nothing that we would write, I, I would assume. But Are you saying like hieroglyphics? Yeah, like maybe something like that, like hieroglyphics <laughs> or like some alien, like, you know what I'm saying? Like you ever seen um, Alien versus Predator when he be on that, you got the little keyboard on the arm and he <laughs> mashing that shit and he got all that crazy <laughs> This nigga got stars and all kind of shit. Nigga, what the fuck is so I'm not messing with you today. Yeah, and then that shit go to you can hear it beep and count down, but you don't know if you got <laughs> ten seconds or ten minutes. God damn. <laughs> uh uh can, can you tell me how much time I got? <laughs> and she so Well but, according to not sex, you got six minutes six hours, six minutes and six seconds. Oh shit. <laughs> the, the, the beast. <laughs> but nah, so it's okay. like we don't, as humans, we don't actually know what God determines right or wrong, and we don't know how we're being judged. Um, so even when it comes to this idea of homosexuality, and I see that too, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it just quick sidebar, like when you walk in, when you go into some of these rooms, like on Clubhouse and stuff, you'll see mm -hmm. where people, they'll be like, well, you know, um, they're kind of, you know, they kind of shun like gay people in on Clubhouse when they come to those religious rooms about God and what is right and what's wrong. And it's like, uh, hey man, like, you know, it's it's all up, it's all up to interpretation. And you gotta understand this too, like, this is why people, this is why nobody should actually get in debates about people's religion because it's faith based. Right. 
is something that's not actually rooted in fact they can't give you something that will be one way today and be another way tomorrow it's faith based it's just what a person believes so maybe people believe in the doctrine you know what i'm saying maybe people believe in the doctrine of the bible maybe people believe in what they go outside and see they might be like well okay i don't believe god exists in a church or in a book i'm gonna go outside and experience god and then your interpretation of god and right and wrong and whatnot it'll be different so i say that to say this um him taking his stance on like just saying like homosexuality is like this is gonna get you to hell i mean it's a lot of different like we don't know 100 percent for sure uh that that's really like uh that's that's really a golden ticket to hell because you might get to heaven and it might be some gay niggas up there and you might get right. to hell and you see some preachers and deacons and pastors right. they might be in the eternal reign ring of fire they're gonna be in the seventh circle of hell they're gonna be in dante's they gotta Inferno. be gay to go to hell yeah so it's that type of thing where it's like okay man it's it's it's, it's up to interpretation because at the end of the day it's just faith-based but him kind of creating that correlation it's like yeah like you don't we we don't have confirmation from all variables to actually coincide with it because you know like i'm i you know we talked about this earlier and this the thing was like mm -hmm. nigga, how do we know the devil down with that gay shit the, the devil might be like <laughs> nigga, i do a lot of you shit. can't come down here yeah no uh-uh he he can't come no <laughs> god don't send him down send his ass to purgatory Send his Stop. ass to the abyss. Now we don't do that shit but, right here, <laughs> nigga. I got. You know he own. did. He did kill the devil at the end of the video. Yeah, and then that's what so, I'm talking about. Like maybe he he not going to hell. So is this nigga the king, king queen? Is this nigga the person of hell? Like nigga, is you the king? Or the so queen? the devil died and made him in charge. Well, he killed it. He seduced him and then killed him. And that's a terrible way to die, too. But that's a whole other different thing. <laughs> so you getting a lap that so now I, I got to I got to be on edge when I go to the strip club, huh? I got to be scared <laughs> for my life. Cause yes. they gonna get your lap dance and then they gonna ask you. Your booty or your life. <laughs> <laughs> I think say that. The stripper whispered it in my ear. I didn't know what it meant. I reached for my cell phone. <laughs> the booty all your life. But I'm saying though, like this was like it's just a lot of crazy shit was going on in that video, and it was like it was mm. a lot to unpack. Yeah, so so I, I think that I, I mean, and because it's art, it's, it's up for interpretation. I think he actually started out in heaven, and he was cast down to hell. That's what like, but he did it in a real. Uh -huh. He did it in a real freak ass way, like nigga. <laughs> usually, when you get kicked out of heaven, you know you just see a nigga falling from the sky and shit. They just descended. Yeah, they just descended. He descended in a very interesting way. <laughs> that was it. Was very um. Yeah, I I I need to work on my my pole dancing skills. Mm -mm. Not you. Not you. Go to the little dog's <laughs> eat dance class. Not you about the all. Uh, that you about to uh, get the tape. I'm gonna take some lessons. Cause uh -uh. he had, he had to, he must be teaching them, you know, P Valley how to get it. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, he learned, he learned at Uncle Clifford School of Pole Dance. <laughs> Come out, not chunk. He has Come some out. technique. Come on, but chunk. Gidget, get your ass in the back. <laughs> <laughs> he, all right. I mean, he expressed himself in a very different and unique way. Let's just say that way. Yeah, he surely did. And you know what? Why we own P Valley? I just want to make this sidebar. Why is every fucking body in P Valley got a regular ass car? I mean, these niggas just sitting up here stealing money. <laughs> they in they in Georgia. They, no, you tell they, me. <laughs> well, no, they were doing it. No, the show was shot in like Mississippi, so it's like no. The scene, the scene is in where they at. Yeah, Are no, they in Mississippi? No, they in Chuckaloosa, Mississippi. Chuckaloosa. Chuck Chuckaloosa. But they filmed in Atlanta. So I don't know. I, I don't I don't know either. But what I do know <laughs> is, like, why ain't nobody got no good goddamn car on this show? Y'all y'all out here popping pussy, popping pussy they doing PPE scams. Mm-mm. 
Mm-mm. Look, I'm gonna tell you I'm something. Taking care of their children. You cannot be shaking your ass that late at night and think you're gonna come in a classroom <laughs> and be productive. I know, cause I was out at three thirty one night and I got I got bite to the room or whatever, man. I'm, man, I woke up, I had two monster drinks. I'm like, man, I got. What you doing, Miss Shake? What was you doing after three? You were shaking your ass? No, nah, I wasn't shaking my ass. I watched some <laughs> ass shake. I watched the ass being shook. But I was not partaking in the shaking of thine gluteus maximus. <laughs> These cheeks don't with move. <laughs> you tell us, what are you doing? Shaking your ass? Shaking your ass? What, what the song, <laughs> the beat was on? Ooh, ooh, you, ooh, you sound ooh. like... You were speaking from experience. So you can't shake your ass and go make a class in the morning. <laughs> nah, well, you can't partake in ass. You can't you can't engage in no ass, no gyrating. Uh, uh, yeah, no gyrating of the butt cheeks and think you're going to be prepared for class. Whether you the ass <laughs> shaker or you just enjoy the shaking <laughs> the of watcher. ass. Yeah. <laughs> See, you, people got to understand too, man. When you're out there looking at that ass, that ass going to hypnotize you. See, you in a trance Mesmerized. now. Yeah, see, what you think, 10, 10 minutes is like 10 hours. You, you know, like, she's <laughs> fuzzy, man. It's crazy in there. I don't know what time, I don't know what day it is. That's why my motherfuckers be wow. walking out of those strip clubs and shit. They be fumbling. They don't know what's going on. They looking for their car <laughs> keys. They don't know what. <laughs> And then they get in their raggedy ass car and drive away. Yeah, they get in one of them P-Valley cars <laughs> and drive away. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Oh, mm -mm. I don't know. Will Nas X, he probably, did he come out with his dance classes? I don't know. He's been trying to capitalize ever since this video came out. Oh, so you say he should have skipped over the shoes. He should have went to uh, demonic, right. demonic pole dancing classes. Right. Right. He might have been on to something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The way he was working them hills. Oh Lord! Now see, I don't like the fact that you actually enjoyed this this man doing this. This is young. This young. Uh, it's hard to do as a woman. So to see a man do it, I'm mind blown. Look, man, we cannot subject our artists to this. I think Lil Nas X need to talk to somebody and decompress. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's a that you know what I'm saying. I'm just seeing uh when I when I seen no, this, when I seen this foolishness that they called a, a music video. I saw a young black man that needed to decompress. I young was a cry for help. Yeah, that's what that was a cry for help. I'm asking I young <laughs> where you at? I know you don't do your show no more, but you need to go holler. You need to go she dig a some hole private sessions. Bike. Yeah, do dig a hole in the backyard and have him scream in there. Your booty <laughs> on your life. Your booty on your life. <laughs> Oi, governor! Oi, governor! Your booty on your life. <laughs> Something is wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, why does he have a British accent? Ooh. Speaking of sexuality, we going down there. Red you heard about? Hole. I mean, I think this one. This one's taking. We taking a left at the end of the street with this one. Um. There was those those files that got shot up in, in ATL. Yeah. You think you think it was sex related? Well, I I don't personally. I mean I see how it could have been, or people might think so. Yeah, I mean like um, okay, so what happened in regards to that is that the area that was shot up those um those Asian spas, like that area is known for uh you know, it, it's in Atlanta, and that area, that particular area of Atlanta, is known for like that. That's like Freak Via, like that's the, it's the Freak Via factory. What? That's like where they the, where they create all the freaks at. So it's like so Freak Freakville, Georgia. Yeah, so that's like the, where the assembly happens at. Like it's a conveyor belt. Wow. They, Lil Nas X is the uh the, the <laughs> form in there. And he uh he creating the six bots. That's what they freak bots. And do you think these are people walking around the streets? But it's not. It's freaky little things. <laughs> freak ass. <laughs> so wow. but now like so okay, so those um those Asian spas over there, they are like, you know, 
people, you, you know, like just the word on the street is that, you know, they have some wild, they, they have some wild shit going on just in the area and different things like that. And, and that was what was said too, is that this guy frequent those places for, uh, you, you know what I'm saying? For the happy ending. And it was mm -hmm. the thing where I guess, you know, he had to ran low on funds and he got to realize, you know, in this game right here, man, you got to pay to play. And and he was, mm. and he had no he had no more coins for the arcade he he ain't had no more he, he was trying no, to get the entertainment for free yeah and we, and we don't do that because you got to understand see artists are giving a piece of they sales so you got to give a piece right. of yourself you know what I'm saying that's what it means to be to sit in the audience you got to pay your ticket uh, wow mm -hmm. and <laughs> the word on the street is. He he didn't know uh, he wasn't able to he wasn't able to pay his admission fee to sit in the audience and that side him off so he was out here running around <laughs> he was out here running it around with like the elf he and was in. the one who's supposed to have got shot <laughs> yeah you damn right <laughs> you he, got a service and didn't pay he thought was, yeah he well uh, he was trying to get the service and they weren't trying that to sound get like him. stealing to me I think they chop your hands off for stuff like that in other countries. You you damn uh -uh. right, but uh, <laughs> he came in there with the motherfucking elf and he thought he was one of them, one of these little new rapper die. Oh shit! He thought he was gonna get it with Roblox. Yeah, so his whole thing was like, all right, well, if they, that's how they wanna play. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, man, that's a tragedy, man. You know, people got shot. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Um, you know, it, it was just a tragic situation. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody deserve to be in that. But you know that. Uh, so, so what's what's your thoughts on it? You know what I'm saying? How you feel about it? I didn't follow the story too closely, but um, I did hear about it, and I thought some of the family stepped forward and said they weren't into any kind of sexual favors or anything like that. It was a reputable biz business and. It was just a tragedy that happened. Um, either way, <clears throat> I think it's unfortunate. And, you know, lives were lost and people's families are hurting because of it. Yeah, and yeah. I hope he gets what he deserves. Yeah, man. And, and, and you know, a, another thing. And I, he also needs to uh, talk to some people and decompress. Yeah, it's he, like he got some issues. Well, he was decompressing. <laughs> No, no, he need professional help. He need a professional decom. <laughs> oh, he, oh, he was like decompress. So what you mean? That's that's the happy ending, right? No, sir. He no. needs professional help. No, that's not what we consider decompress around here. He need he needs some help because clearly he is not right in the mind. No. If this is where this incident took him no, to kill no, some people. No, 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 he ain't right. He ain't, he ain't right up, up top. But I mean. Um, uh, or down below. Yeah, he wasn't. Yeah, he messed up all over. Yeah, he need to. He need to jump on in. You know what? He should have went on ahead and jump on one of them apps, man. They got like you can talk to um. You, you can talk can to call the eight 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 number. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought we were talking about something else. Well, no. Nah, like they got like apps on the phone. <laughs> like you could just actually go and sign up for a therapist. Be like, you know what, man? I'm fucked up in the head. Let me just talk to somebody. And you can, yeah. you can talk to like therapists online, like, you know what I'm saying? Like clubhouse or whatever, like, you know, mm -hmm. or Facebook or Instagram, you know, app, click on it, holler at your therapist, get your mind right, bro. I actually free. learned about that, that they have the phone call, you know, counseling sessions and therapy sessions. I actually learned about that on clubhouse in a room that I was in and they were talking about it. It was about black health and mental health and making it normalizing black people, you know, talking about their mental health and seeking counseling and somebody had brought that up i didn't know it was a thing before then yeah it is especially like with the virtual world and the pandemic i think it's become more popular yeah now nah, um it's like yeah that, that that's the thing and you know people being locked in locked and boxed in and you know ain't being able to be free and get out and move around and that was like actually prior before the uh pandemic like it's something that existed mm -hmm. it, it's it's been existing for a while it's helpful you know what i'm saying i mean like look uh if you need somebody to talk to you know you just go out there and do that before people kind of you know what i'm saying like go off the deep end yeah for you self-destruct man so yeah yeah. Yeah. So, 
We are at an hour and 18 minutes. For real? We made, oh, we did a whole hour. <laughs> and yeah, did you? Do you hear me? I, I'm free. I'm free to keep going. Okay, well, shit. I mean, if you got anything else on the own, um, or we can always, you know, save it for another episode. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Like, if you know, hopefully, man, we do get the chance to do this again because this was fun talking about this shit. What and you it, mean, hopefully? Well, we will, we will be back. We shall. We return. will do it again. <laughs> yes, this is gonna be done a lot. We this have is, to censor something or put a disclaimer out on this one. It was, it was a little heavy in here. I mean, shit, I mean, what it is like? And the other ones ain't going to be? You think I'm, I'm going to be lighter? You think my disposition on life going to change? Do you think I've decompressed? I'm still you need to decompress and come back. Yeah, I'm going to decompress, all right. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is my therapy. Let's unpack the decompression. That's the title of it. Yeah, yeah. You need to de decompress, <laughs> beloved. Speak it in the hole. That, that was the name of the episode gonna be called Speak It in the Hole. Wow. And we saying your booty are your life through the whole thing. Yeah. Great. <laughs> your booty are your life. Your booty are your Speaking life. Speak it into the hole. I don't know where the British Gosh. accent come from. Oh, yeah. It's great. Your booty are your life. It's it's great. You're actually doing a great job at it. I can't do accents for anything. Oh, That's something I'm working on with acting. Oh, I thank you so very much. <laughs> tea and crumpets. <laughs> hey, don't talk about the tea and crumpets. Your booty I, I like your life. Tea. I mean, tea cool. You know what I'm saying? I, I prefer uh, uh, Here we a, go. a little a, a Bud Light uh, <laughs> brought to a, a, a cold. Uh, well, I prefer a brisk Bud Light. Hmm. Would you happen to have any? I don't like Bud Light. I drink any goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it real. Yeah, yeah. If we just gonna be honest. I like uh I like Modelo and Tecate and Corona, all the Mexican beers. You know I'm over here in Cali. Yeah, so you Sorry. like so you like Mexican beers and tacos. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Hilarious. Taco me, please. <laughs> mm. Oh, you! But you know what? No, I, I think that's what I'm gonna do, man. Um, I'm definitely gonna take a trip uh, over there where you at. I'm just gonna, I'm going over there for a fucking taco, like literally. Yep. And I'm gonna show you some of the best taco places in my city. Okay, okay. I know okay. where they all at. I'm, I'm ready for this. This is gonna be an adventure, people. <laughs> and then I'm gonna come to Georgia. You're gonna take me to Zaxby's. Yeah, we're gonna go get some wings. We're gonna do all that. We're gonna hit it. Cause you know all the big wings in the strip clubs. And they I, oh, I done no, been to I a club. No wings. I done been to a club, man. And it wasn't no strip club. It's just a regular club on that little menu. They had the 24K gold wing. I ain't never ate a gold wing before in my life. Oh, I heard about those. But I'm going back to Atlanta. And guess what I'm gonna do? <laughs> I'm gonna go get me a what gold. You gonna do? I'm gonna go get a gold wing. 24k prime I can't time, unfortunately please. I'll go with you to for you to eat the wings I can't eat the wings I'm pescatarian but I will watch you enjoy the wings man look first of all once I get I don't a, eat no chicken once you get enough once you get enough drink in your city you're an artist once, once we get <laughs> I'm you, not gonna care <laughs> once we get you unstable enough because when you in that space well yeah just just it's it's an acting thing that's what it is just invoke a character that eats chicken. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I mean, I used to eat chicken. So I could tap in. I know I know how to be realistic, you know, with it. Yeah, so now, nah, yeah, just... That's that, cool. That's what we're going to do. We're going to put you in a good... We're going to put you... We're going to put your head in a mental space where it's kind of foggy and you kind of <laughs> lose track of time and everything. Then when you're eating it, it's almost like you there and you're doing it, but you're really not because you ain't yourself because your mind is somewhere else. Like an out-of-body experience? Exactly. Interesting. So, yeah, it man. Sounds like fun. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, you know what? This has been a successful show. And okay. we are definitely going to do this again. You know what I'm saying? Got to go ahead and hit that edit button, chop it up, chop it up, all nice and good. And then we're going to put this out here to the people and see how they fuck with it. And, you know, we're going to be back. Because we ain't got nowhere else to okay. go. We, <laughs> we got, uh, 
we ain't got nothing to do. We in the middle of a we in the middle of a panorama. Uh, mm -hmm, sure. So why y'all motherfuckers sitting here collecting your all collecting your unemployment? And then get what I heard too. They supposed to be getting the kids like a little a uh, stipend, like like if you. I heard about that. Your the parents. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to get me some of that money. You ain't got no kids. Over me there, too. Dude. No, I ain't got not one. You got some kids I can claim? No. You got them puppies. I mean, like, I wonder if... They need to make a thing about that, for real. Mm. Mm. Dogs are expensive. We, we might have to get a... Uh... Shit. Adoption know. going on? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's... Uh, Clubhouse Cousins adoption agency yeah i mean like how long do we have to keep <laughs> these people and do it is, a, is it a return on <laughs> and then i can you know keep them do a amendment to my taxes get the money and just give you the talking about, back. Oh, you God. talking about return to sender or return on investment <laughs> all of that well i i want the money not the child because if i got to keep the child and the money i got to use the money to spend on the child it's the Mm -mm. It's the dad be daddy for me. <laughs> yeah, the dad be false to daddy. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't want your motherfucking ass anyway. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'ma pray for you. Yeah, pray no. for <laughs> Pray for me, man. Pray for pray for me. Pray for the next episode. And I'ma pray for the child. Yeah. Oh no, you gotta worry about it. they gonna be all right. They used to the the uh mistreatment. This child gonna need some counseling. They gonna need to decompress yeah, after they, they done with you. Nigga about seven years old in a you know, uh therapist office. You know, I just need to smoke a cigarette. Yeah. My nerves <laughs> bad. Oh man. You got That's a square. Funny. Uh yeah, yeah. A square. Yeah, let me let me get one of your squares, man. Can I smoke in here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Speaking into the hole. My little man's supposed to be eating, a, eating my little man's supposed to be eating a happy meal. He over here smoking cigarettes and decompressing. Yeah, yeah. Let me get let me get some of that tea. What that is? That's the uh, <laughs> what, what, what what kind of tea you got? You got the the green tea? Two sugars, please. <laughs> Green tea, black tea, two sugars. No, you're supposed to say that with the English accent. Two sugars, please. <laughs> All right. Top of the morning to you. Not an English accent. Top of the morning to you. Hold on, wait. I think top of the morning. Hold on, that's Irish. I, I mean, that's something else. Yeah. <laughs> oh, St. Patrick's Day was last month. Oh, man. But you on the wrong one. Yeah. Let's stop for you. Go ahead and derail this whole segment. Yeah, because I'm going out. I'm going off the reels. Man, look, check this out, y'all. If y'all enjoyed the show, man, come back again. Sit down. Listen to us, man. We doing this every weekend. We we out here. We tackling these we tackling these tough topics. We having fun with it. And you know, something to entertain you, educate you, and get you through the day. So on that note, I'm out. You still here, Julie? So you you out with you, you coming here. too? Oh, I'm checking out, but I'm gonna go ahead and let them know. You know, yeah, I'm um, Shalice. You can follow me on Instagram at Shalice underscore with the melanin. Okay, and yeah, man, too. Come check us out on White on um, White One Band on all social media platforms. You can find me there. Um, also on Clubhouse too, man. You know, come kick it in the family ties room. We have conversations like this every day. Uh, you know, us clubhouse the whole cousins. community of people. Yeah. The whole community of people, man. It's family ties, uh clubhouse room. And you know, come kick it with us and some of our, you know, clubhouse cousins, man. And on that note, we out. Peace, y'all. Bye.